Now, so we'll get started. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the third and penultimate of our autumn winter series of the ETC Network Lunchtime Information Sessions. We hope you've all enjoyed the session so far. So we've had two sessions so far, and if you have missed either of those, they are available to watch back on our Southern Regional Assembly YouTube. So please do go back and check those. I've also seen from the registration list that we have a few new names this month, uh, so I'll just introduce myself. So my name is Anya Whelan and I am an EU Projects Officer with the Southern Regional Assembly and I facilitate the ETC Network. Uh, to all the new attendees that we have this month, um, if you're not a member of the ETC Network or you're not aware of what we do, the ETC Network is a forum for ETC project officers in EU programmes and projects or those who are interested in EU projects, particularly in the southern region, to learn, share experiences and network with each other. So network is the big key part of it. A few points on housekeeping before we get started and apologies. I know this is information that some of you have heard twice before over the last couple of months. But as a participant, you are muted and your camera is turned off. Um, if you aren't muted, we just ask you to keep uh, to keep muted and keep your camera off for the duration of the session. Um, we do, however, uh, um, welcome you to ask questions. You'll notice at the top of your screen, there is a Q&A tab that will provide you with the option to ask questions to today's speaker. I'll be moderating the Q&A function and I'll approve your questions as they come in. Um, you're also welcome to ask questions throughout the presentation. You don't have to wait till the end. And then I will pose the questions to our speaker in our dedicated Q&A section after the presentation. If you're happening to have any problems with the Q&A function, um, you can just use the chat function as well. But if possible, please do use uh, the Q&A function. Uh, we'll try to answer as many questions as possible, but we're fitting this in on, lun on lunch break time. So, you know, um, if there's any questions we're not able to answer, we'll collect them and um, we'll send you on answers after uh, today's session. So um, also as well, if you're experiencing any technical problems, just let us know in the chat and my colleague Anna, who is monitoring it, will, uh, will be able to help you. And today's session is being recorded and along with the slides and the recording and any say additional resources may be mentioned during Helena's presentation, we'll be sure to send those on to you after, um, after the event as well. So with that, I am delighted to welcome today's speaker. So Helena Stromberg is the Communications Co Coordinator for the EU Just Transition Fund at the Eastern and Midland Regional Assembly. Um, prior to this role, she was an EU project officer leading an Interreg Europe project called Next to Met. Helena has over 10 years of experience working on a variety of sustainable development policy issues in Ireland, France, Australia and Kenya, including communications on taxation and development at the OECD. So a very varied and interesting career. Um, Helena is going to present to us today on communicating your EU projects successfully. And so with that, I'll hand the floor over to you now, Helena. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anya. Uh, let me just make sure my presentation comes up all right. You can just confirm if you see that. Yeah, we can see that there, Helena. Good. Um, all right, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be speaking to you today. Um, I hope everyone's having a really great lunch already. Um, as Anya mentioned, I have worked in uh, many settings on a variety of topics. Um, um, with a heavy communications focus on each one of them. Um, so in my present presentation today, um, I'm hoping to bring you all some tips and tricks uh, that I have learned along the way um, so that you can better communicate your uh, about your EU funded projects. Now, um, I'm not here to walk through uh, how to draft any communication strategies or communications plans uh, or what is required within each of your ETC pro programs. So I advise you that you check on uh, in your program manuals for those specific requirements. Um, but um, I will hopefully give you some uh, tools and let you that will enable you to write and implement an impactful strategy uh, that is right for your particular project. Um, so before I begin um, with our discussion today, uh, I want to cover um, what, what is so important about communications. So why are we uh, communicating about our projects? Uh, you may be 
thinking, uh, well, project work already takes up uh, a lot of our time as it is. Um, however, it is quite an important uh, part of your project. So um, perhaps the first answer to why uh, we're communicating, uh, you might say, is uh, that it is, a, it is a regulatory or a program requirement to have communications within your uh, activities. However, um, it's important to realize that communication is a very important mechanism uh, for visibility and transparency um, to demonstrate where EU funds are going and what impact EU funds are having on the ground and how it's imp impacting uh, individuals on the ground every single day. And thirdly, uh, what I'd say most importantly is um, you have a really good story to tell. Uh, it is very interesting work that everyone's doing in these programs or projects um, and others are going to be equally interested about it. Uh, so visibility is crucial to each uh, relevant stakeholder um, to share your ideas and perspectives and to build new collaborations. Uh, so putting your project out there has the potential for also continuation of your project ideas beyond the project period um, or even perhaps uh, enable you to spark collaborations that uh, create new pro projects. Um, uh, I know that I've said that I was not going to um, be talking about communication strategies uh, or planning, uh, but I did want to leave with some resources uh, that you can help you guide, uh, can help you uh, guide you along the way. So the first thing um, in relation to communication strategies and planning um, is that it's a key step in your project planning overall and should be given due consideration. So the first step is to familiarize yourself with communications requirements uh, within your program manual, um, such as the obligation to have uh, web pages, posters and signage, uh, use your of logos, EU logos and uh, Government of Ireland logos, um, and a funding statement to acknowledge um, where the funding is coming from. So since um, this current program, programming period, since uh, 2021, it is a legal requirement for um, all recipients of EU funds to acknowledge their uh, that their action has received EU funding. Um, so don't forget uh, to prominently display those logos and the funding statement on all your communications material. That includes uh, at dissemination events, uh, on any equipment purchase, infrastructure um, that is built. So get you familiarized uh, with what the requirements are in your manuals. Um, it is also um, important to, uh, within the implementation of the project, to consider the resources that are required to run the communications throughout the project lifetime. Um, do know that they note that the, it is uh, takes a lot of time, um, staffing efforts um, and money um, to carry out communications activities. So plan that accordingly. Um, I've left a few uh, links here in the, this slide that can help you get started on your communication plans and your strategies. Um, one of the first things that we consider when reflecting on your communications objectives or after doing so, um, and then when you go on to plan your communications activities, um, is really to define your target audience. And this is a key uh, step that we have to start out with. Um, this will determine what types of communications activities would be most appropriate and what messaging we'll be, uh, we'll be using and uh, where you want to spend most of your time uh, in communicating. So you might be saying, well, I want to contact or have everyone in the general public um, know about my project. Um, I would uh, advise that you then uh, did refine that question further. Um, what is the reason for the general public to know about your project? Is it to uh, reckon that everyone on the streets should be able to recognize your project exists, uh, which would be absolutely fantastic? Um, or do you want to uh, achieve a specific goal or influence a certain type of person who can then um, make a change happen that is relevant to your project? Um, so if you're then um, looking to contact stake key stakeholders, define who those stakeholders are um, and what they what role they would play in your uh, project. Um, and if there's any experts in the field, do you want them to uh, feed back into your project or do you want to inform them that your project exists uh, and uh, of what you are doing in the field? 
Um, so how, how would you like to engage with them to find that further? Um, if you have any particular end users uh, for your project, for example, uh, just uh, if your project is uh, about um, libraries, for example, um, and you want to have an end user of your libraries, um, um, you want to inform them that your your project is going on. How would you communicate with those, and who would those people be? Um, if there's any spatial uh, element to your project, is it a regional, interregional project? How would you? Uh, who are in your target group there and how would you reach them? Um, if you if your project has a particular age focus or a particular um, cohort of people that you would like to uh, target there, uh, for example, if it's an older um, population in your target um, audience that pertains to your project, um, Consider then the type of uh, platforms you want to use. Perhaps a digital platform uh, alone would not be the most effective means. You might want to um, mix that up with other types of platforms uh, to be able to reach uh, the widest um, audience. If it's a younger age group that you are uh, that is relevant to your project, then you may want to tailor the messages uh, in a certain way or use more images um, as appropriate. Um, so also ask yourself who is uh, who would be involved um, in to make that desired policy change in your target project. Um, so if especially for interreg Europe projects that really focus on the policy change side of things, who would be involved in making that uh, policy change happen, and how do you get, have them engage in your um, your project? Um, so stakeholder mapping, as uh, an image in this slide can show, um, is a very useful exercise to help you uh, really um, deal with these questions. Then uh, still reflecting on the type of audience that we want to target, um, consider how you will be able to reach them uh, and on what channels. So you can ask yourself, uh, how do people in your target audience get their information and uh, what point in time, uh, what point in the day do they usually get their information? Um, that is a very key question to start off with. Um, and what platforms does that audience use? Um, are there any specific accounts that they use or any specific hashtags? You can make note of those uh, accounts and hashtags that you can uh, for social media and you can use those um, to help target that group or those networks that already exist um, in your own posts uh, and broaden your own reach in that way. Um, would uh, the message get the right attention on a specific platform? Uh, or would that message perhaps get lost or the, be muddled within the other content that exists on that platform? So just uh, do consider that uh, when you're thinking of where to put your messages. Um, when uh, do we need to communicate? Is that around an event or um, do you want to have a continuous uh, engagement with your audience? Um, do we have uh, internally the resources to use a platform effectively? So, for example, uh, if you're taking um, or thinking about using Facebook, uh, just so, uh, um, as an example there, uh, from my experience, it takes a lot of time and energy to manage the comments coming in uh, and any uh, incoming messages. So if you want to use Facebook effectively, be sure to have the resources uh, to do so well. Um, and a mix of platforms. Um, what is the the best mix of platforms uh, for my own project? So to get your uh, particular message out there, um, we you won't be able to get every single person uh, in your target audience and uh, in one go, and nor um, nor can one be expected to use every single mean uh, platform out there. Um, so do consider which modes of communication is right for your uh, specific project uh, and for uh, what audience you want to reach. Um, some uh, then some useful tools and modes of communication that we have in, in our arsenal um, to highlight here. Uh, so first, we may uh, all be familiar with most of the social media platforms that are out there uh, that are currently being used. Um, for broader project communication. 
if you are using digital tools uh, for your comms, be aware of the different skill sets that are needed uh, and the effort that is needed to create uh, particular content and manage that two way communication that I mentioned. Um, and also if you want to make any creative um, content uh, such as videos and interviews uh, and or infographics and uh, images, uh, just consider that uh, while you're planning. Uh, don't forget the more traditional, for lack of a better word, traditional tools, uh, they are still quite powerful to get your message out there. So uh, print media, online uh, newspapers, radio and billboards um, and pull up banners while you're at attending events. Uh, direct emails obviously can really be a great way to be very targeted in your messaging. Um, radio is actually uh, I find a very interesting one um, that is still being very uh, impactful. So, uh, for example, if we're working on the Just Transition Fund um, in regions that are uh, very commuter heavy, um, 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 yeah, may means of um, commuting every day. Um, a lot of people have the radio on, so if we want to uh, be able to message um, about the Just Transition Fund, for example, uh, we've been using uh, radio to alert people of the opportunities, uh, and that has been quite uh, impactful and effective means. Um, events can be key points in uh, project communication. Uh, they can also spark additional communications activities uh, to help you get your message out there. So they can be a means in itself and uh, a mode for additional communication. Um, so use them to your advantage. Uh, both the ones that you organize within your projects and others that you attend uh, within the project work itself. Um, and I've put down the word influencers here, and I don't necessarily mean social media influencers, uh, but by all means, if they do help get your project uh, message out there and they help your project, yeah, go ahead, use them. <laughs> but I um, specifically mean here is uh, thought influencers. So any key persons in your field, um, perhaps it's a professor or um, a, maybe a minister or something like that, some a thought influencer um, that can help get your message out too. So if you reach them effectively, they can also be advocates uh, further afield for your project and get your message out there. Um, and another key one here is um, don't forget your internal communications. Uh, your own um, organizational staff, uh, your project partners uh, are definitely key here. So keep them engaged at any at all the steps in your project. Um, and the, the internal communication, you uh, don't know if uh, perhaps you are, uh, someone else in your organization is working on something similar. There might be a collaboration or other activities that can connect there. Um, next slide. Uh, then um, now we may know who we want to communicate with uh, and uh, what type of uh, platform we want to use. Um, then we need to look at what does our message look like. Uh, here are some general notes uh, that on how to craft effective messages. The, the first one and super important is keep it simple. Um, ex one exercise that I uh, use all the time myself um, when I'm starting to write something or uh, craft any messages, no matter what the platform is, is I imagine that I am um, explaining my project or whatever message that I want to get out there to a partner or to a friend, uh, to your child or your parent, depending on like what level um, of your audience that you want to communicate with. Uh, or if, imagine that you're giving an elevator pitch. Uh, those are really great um, techniques to distill what your message is um, and what the key points that you want to get across and perhaps uh, simplify that language um, so that it can be more accessible to a wider audience or non-expert audience. Um, and in that, uh, all, avoid jargon as much as possible, unless you have a, uh, you are very sure that you have a particular um, expert uh, group in front of you. Do not assume that uh, everyone has the same knowledge of what uh, a specific uh, jargon or term is. 
uh, in EU funds. There's so many different uh, acronyms. So just be sure to clarify um, and any specialized terms or phrases. Um, and call to actions should be quite evident in your message. So if you want to have someone sign up for a newsletter or register to an event or make uh, make that message up front and center, uh, put it in bold uh, with links right next to it and dates right next to that uh, call to action. So it's really scannable uh, on a page or on whatever me medium that you're using. If you have a newsletter and you want someone to click on an article, add a button. It's a very simple one, but a very effective one. Um, make that material very engaging so that people, it's, it's very simple for someone to know I'm I, you're asking me to click on a button. Um, if you want someone to engage with a specific topic or uh, provide feedback in an email, uh, for example, uh, put that ask in a separate paragraph um, so it's quite a visible that that is a question. These are very simple techniques, but some are sometimes forgotten, um, but can also help in, in your message, getting your message across. Focus on the story that your, uh, that your project uh, has. Uh, each individual one has a very unique story um, and has a very good message to say. So what does your project mean for the average person? Help describe that um, that story and make that connection to an individual. So uh, emotional messages, um, fear is always a very uh, powerful um, mean to get a message that re really sticks with someone, but try if we can not to be um, making too many um, fearful <laughs> messages out there. But get there are very good ways to find emotional messages uh, to have that really strong impact with your audience. Um, so there can be stories uh, from your projects. If there's a person who has been impacted in a particular way, uh, that can be um, a, a piece of message that you have in your um, communications. Uh, use a people-centered approach. Uh, so let people see uh, within that message what that uh, project means to an individual. So what does this mean to me, the, the viewer of your message? Uh, that can be help drive the message uh, forward as well. Um, and also repeat messages. Um, you might not get uh, the attention the first time, but you might get the attention the second time and also remind people of uh, what your message is. Um, and then a, a note here on uh, accessibility. So uh, always uh, consider accessibility in your, um, in your communications material, no matter what it is. So uh, some key things to keep in mind is to use high contrast colors, um, a good size uh, for your text. Um, consider that there might be different language abilities in the room. Um, use a variety of formats in your communication. So mix it up with the text, with video and audio. Um, that can be quite um, help, helpful in for people to absorb your message in a, and uh, by using those that mix of mediums. Um, camel case hashtags um, are much more easy to read than a long um, um, row of small characters. Um, always a caption and or subtitle your videos and your images. Do not, do not assume that there is no one with a disability in your audience. Um, always make considerations to um, in advance uh, of your uh, communications material to help everyone um, access your message better. So if we look out for everyone, it usually it's it's helpful for everyone to get your message uh, by considering those things. Um, now, data um, and numbers can be a very uh, powerful way to get your message across as well. So use uh, charts and figures and graphics uh, can help you visualize your message uh, in a very quick um, way um, and to tell your project story as well. Uh, I hope I don't need to say this, but just a, a something to keep in mind. Make sure you use accurate figures um, in your communications. Um, make the data uh, relatable, and by that I mean uh, rather than 
like turn those really enormous numbers um, into something that is more graspable for a, a wider audience. So rather than saying perhaps 150 million was spent in County X uh, in the last programming period between 2024 and 2020, um, rather bring it down to like perhaps a per capita amount or what did that um, amount of funding contribute to um, so that is more relatable to a person. Uh, show uh, geography and pictures alongside data to demonstrate uh, the story that your figures are presenting. Um, if you have a document uh, or a, a, a paragraph perhaps with a lot of uh, figures within that, um, it is a good idea to have a chart or a graphic alongside that text um, that really helps uh, a reader engage with your uh, figures and interrogates the data themselves um, so that they are able to uh, under make a better understand, get a better understanding of uh, your figures. Um, and communications is not a precise science here. Humans are quite complex um, and the world we live in is really complex. So there's no absolute way uh, for to communicate about your projects. So hopefully no one's here today to try to get, you know, A, B, C, D, um, step it by step here of how and what's the best way to communicate. But just acknowledge that it is a, a an ongoing um we have to figure out what is best for our own project, uh, which is the kind of fun and exciting part about communications. However, through evaluation, um, we can kind of see what works best and help us tailor our report approach accordingly. So why do we bother with evaluating communications? Um, and is that to understand how effective our communications activities are, um, to maximize our reach and impact, and to improve our resource efficiency, to know where should we spend more or less of our time, or money and effort. Um, and as I said, the communications is a, and should be a very much a two-way street. So allow for that space uh, and time to get that feedback uh, from the commu uh, communications activities back into your project and uh, are you getting that um, that back and forth messaging uh, that you want? Uh, that is a, an important step also to consider when you're looking at evaluating your uh, communications. Um, I won't go too much into detail here uh, about how to do the evaluations of your communications activities. That could be a totally separate webinar in itself. So I have left um, some links on this slide uh, where you can get some really good resources and they really spell out um, how to do the evaluations in your, of your communications activities. Um, however, some really key points in your evaluation journey is to, uh, first of all, include evaluations in your communication strategy from the get-go. Have this be one of your activities. Uh, Set uh, the right indicators and your targets. So these can be qualitative and quantitative. So you can look at surveys of events. Uh, how do people feel after the event? Uh, did they get the information they wanted? Um, how uh, did people engage um, with your messaging? Uh, how many people attended uh, your webinar, for example? Those are all qualitative and quantitative um, indicators that you can look at. Um, analyze um, and carry out that evaluation. And then from that evaluation, adjust your technique or your messaging or the platforms that you're using or how you're using, perhaps when you're using those platforms, um, just to get your the best uh, strategy um, for your own project. And now I would not be doing my job as a communications coordinator for EU projects uh, without mentioning uh, once and for all uh, to use logos and the funding statement in all your communications material. Uh, that's you know from the events uh, that you're doing to any uh, printed material, basically anything that has a public face uh, facing element to them uh, should have an uh, acknowledgement of uh, where the support is co coming from to your projects. And that includes the visual uh, element of including those logos and also uh, that um, statement um, where the funding is coming from. 
Uh, and before I wrap up today um, uh, and uh, looking forward to your questions, uh, communications is a really fun uh, area. So I want to uh, share a few ideas um, of eff effective types of activities that you can consider in your um, plans and your strategies. Um, Firstly, uh, you can highlight some really key points uh, during project lifetime. So if there's a launch or an MOU signing, uh, the, the final project event, if you have a particular webinar, um, uh, if you're meeting with your stakeholders, those are very key points in your journey that you can highlight. Um, invite journalists to those key points uh, in your project as well. Um, contact local journalists. Um, they would be really good um, tools or really good contacts um, to get uh, They're often those local journalists are often uh, very happy to be contacted about stories, especially if it's a local story and they can help amplify your reach uh, of your story. Uh, get involved in the European Week of Regions and Cities. Um, this can you can sit on a panel um, or have your um, talk about your project uh, at a, on a panel or uh, anything related to your project if there's a particular topic that is relevant. Um, attend the the event itself in person um, and network is a great ways to communicate as well. Um, for any completed projects, uh, look into um, applying for the next Regio Star Awards. This is a uh, EU-wide um, uh, award system uh, that uh, really celebrates key or excellence in um, EU projects. And there's a whole uh, packet of um, support uh, that the EU provides, the Commission provides um, to get the, the project messages out. Um, policy briefs are a super, super good way to get um, to collate the good practices um, that uh, emerge from your projects. Uh, all of the projects or throughout the, your project journey, you'll come across uh, excellent uh, good practices in all the regions and your partners in your own regions. Um, so this is a really good way to highlight those and be able to share those um, learnings with others uh, outside of your project. Um, ways to do that is, is um, those uh, policy learning is, um, can be quite complex in some cases. So again, I reiterate to um, be simple in those messages. You can use uh, infographics to help get those uh, policy briefs uh, be really impactful. Um, use videos, um, either live animation, uh, or sorry, live action or animation um, to uh, get to talk about your project. Um, you can do interviews with your partners, your, your project partners, any stakeholders that you're engaging with. Uh, if there is any participants at a, an event you want to interview um, or an expert in the field there. Um, and then you can write an article and submit that either to an online platform or to your local um, media. Um, you can create a short video out of this and have uh, it be one of your communications activities and spread that on social media or on your website. Um, and then another, uh, the last one on this list here is um, project uh, open days. Um, that is an idea of having um, your, if you throw open your doors if you have a, a particular location for your project. Um, that you can um, invite the, the general audience, anyone walking by, to come view what you are doing, what you're working, have them ask questions uh, and um, yeah, engage with your project on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, and that is, um, I have added a slide here. Um, these um, This presentation will be sent around to all participants, so you will uh, be able to have this as a resource. I just wanted to have a kind of a library of really useful resources that I use myself um, and uh, that can be helpful for anyone uh, working on communications. Um, so that is uh, everything I have uh, prepared for you today, and I'm really looking forward to your questions. If anyone has any questions, uh, specific ones following this I, uh, about the EU Just Transition Fund or communications in general, uh, I'm happy to for you to email me at any point. Thank you.
Now, perfect, Helena. Thank you very much. I'll just get our next um, our next slide up now. So, um, yeah, so as I was saying there, thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Helena, for that very informative uh, presentation with some really brilliant advice on communicating your EU project successfully. Um, I particularly liked your advice on talking to, you, to someone who's not involved in the project. So whether that's a friend, a partner, someone within your family, because I think we can get very focused on our projects and they can deal with quite, you know, kind of a vast array of subjects. And I think especially if you're looking at, you know, communicating your project across print media or through a website, it needs to have a different type of tone. So I think if you're putting your project to someone who has no involvement in the project and asking them, does it make sense? That's a really, really good tip. And I know it's something that I've done before. So um, as Helena mentioned, we'll share her presentation after this event because there was lots of really useful links in it as well that people might want to go back and look at. And as always, I'll also send on any upcoming ETC call deadlines um, because uh, there are a few coming up and they're good for you to know. Um, so we'll now move on to the Q&A portion um, of this session. If you haven't already um, asked any questions, you can pop them into the Q&A function there and um, we can we can ask them to Helena. Um, I might though start Helena with just a question of my own. So as I said, there was a lot of information there, a lot of really helpful information. But if someone is now taking on communications responsibility, whether that's as a communications officer for a project or just as a partner who is obviously going to have to communicate their project, what would be, I suppose, the key takeaways that they should take away from your presentation today? Um, you know, that's a really good question, and I think it might be I bombarded you all with too yeah. much information, but hopefully you have them as a resource. But um, yeah, the first thing would probably be uh, consider the resources involved um, and have um, that in your, you know, in the back of your mind um, to have it as an additional um, output of your project. Uh, it's It's not... It shouldn't be thought of as a, a, an add-on or a um, something fluffy at the end of the day to, to communicate. Uh, have this be an actual um, project activity almost uh, within your own project. So it does get that attention that it deserves um, because it can really be beneficial to your um, your own project, getting that feedback, the, the two-way communication. So, um, it, yeah, speak to speaking to your uh, stakeholders in many different ways uh, can really get um, help improve the quality of your own projects. Um, be flexible in your approach. Um, kind of have fun with it and try uh, many different communication modes. Um, don't stick with one um, one type of communication mode. Um, see if you're getting traction on one platform versus another. Um, and do that evaluation piece um, to kind of see what works uh, and what doesn't. Um, yeah, be be very as creative as you want, really. Um, then the I guess the key, very very key one is to keep it simple. Your messaging, um, be simple, accessible, and relatable in your messaging. Yeah, perfect. I think that thing around simple messaging is important because I think any of us who've worked in EU projects or EU funding will know, you know, that there's a lot, as you mentioned, Alina, a lot of acronyms, you know, so I think that simplicity part is really important. So I'll just move to, um, I'll just do two questions that we got through our questions um, option here. So um, what should be included in your project's newsletter? So yes, yeah, so project, you know, all EU projects will have project newsletters and what should be included in those? Um, it really depends on um, what the point of or the what you'd like to get out of your newsletters. So uh, I didn't really mention in the email. I kind of in my thought process, the the message um, or saying email communication is quite an effective um, way as well. And I meant also newsletters that way. Um, but it depends on what you um, expect to get out of those um, or the point of having those. So. Um, Consider um, con consider keeping your newsletters quite concise and uh, not cluttered. Uh, make it something that people will want to read. Um, 
so firstly, you want to evaluate why you want to have that newsletter and why you're doing it, engaging in that way. Um, and what kind of newsletter do you want to send? So do you want it to be informative? Do you want someone to interact? And how often will you be sending those out? Um, consider where and how you're going to be uh, getting that audience as well. Is it a, um, a subscription um, type service? So people are know that they're signing up for this, which they should be, GDPR, everyone. Um, and set the expectation where if where you have your uh, subscription um, link, um, set the expectations on that page of what people are signing up for and what kind of information they will be receiving through that net, uh, newsletter. Um, in keeping your um, content then concise uh, within that and uncluttered, um, I would pick one key action to highlight per um, newsletter. So, um, it tends to be like if you have a newsletter and you just want to get all perhaps all your calls, for example, uh, it might be very difficult to scroll through them. So if you have a key message that you want to get across, have that highlighted front and center um, and then additional information can go out under. Um, and that kind of goes. Um, like keep your emails, also the newsletter quite scannable. So um, that goes for both uh, writing on uh, for websites and um, and for newsletters. The if I don't know if everyone's heard this, but um, I use this all the time when I'm uh, writing for for websites. Um, think of the letter F, um, so the capital letter F. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing right love here. Um, so people, when you're getting on a, a, a on an email or on a website you scroll the way your eyes move on the page is you're scrolling down and you read the headlines so use that to your advantage so have your key things on top um and then with something and then maybe a highlight uh, or bold text below um because that's the first few things that people see and then people will start scrolling down the page uh so use that um like the way that we look at pages think reflect on how yourself look at pages um, and how do you want to then craft your messages and your visually um, so that other people can uh, quite quickly absorb your information. Um, always make it uh, also make it so that people can unsubscribe uh, quite easily. Um, so uh, tools like MailChimp uh, have that automatically on the bottom of their page uh, and other tools as well for newsletters um, have that too. Um, so um, that's a GDPR one. So make sure you you are GDPR compliant. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Alina. And just one last question, just because I think it's a really interesting one. So Patricia has asked us, would you advise using AI to get your message across? So correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, um, Patricia, but I presume she means the likes of, say, ChatGBT and so on for writing content. Um, that is, it's AI is such an interesting um, topic and we have actually um, networks uh, for EU um, communicators um, and we all talk about AI and what this is, um, what this is doing to to our communications and all that. It's a super interesting topic, and uh, I think we're having a, a um, something in the new year just specifically on this. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be afraid of it. It can be a really interesting tool. Um, we are all super busy in all our uh, lives at the moment and and there's as i said like the pro project running a project uh takes a lot of work in itself so um it can be just a tool to start um start getting those ideas flowing um you know ask the create a couple like ask chat gdp or whatever you want to use um Get a, please write me a, a, you know five tweets on this topic or that topic. It usually doesn't come back in um, the right tone, perhaps, or um, or have the right exact like call to actions if you're uh, working on that. But that can be a really good starting point. Um, so don't be afraid of that. But also, as uh, us communicators are talking about. Um, the, the implications of AI is also 
do we know everything that is out there if that is a person speaking behind it or not so um kind of keep it personal um and uh, if you're retweeting things make sure that you're you know that it you that is a person behind it as well um but it can be a really interesting tool um another thing that we can use to make our lives easier yeah definitely i think we'll all of us will go on board with that <laughs> So um, look, that was, and I'm just seeing we have our five minute notice that we're finishing in five minutes. So I'll just move on to the next one there, but thanks very much, Helena. And if people did have any further questions, um, you can, Helena's given her email there at the end. So even if it's to do with, as Helena said, the Just Transition Fund, uh, Helena will be happy to help you um, with that. So look, I'd like to thank uh, you, the members of our UTC network for the continued engagement and for the support in shaping the topics. So the topics that we covered for this autumn winter series were all informed by our members. We sent out a survey and these were topics that you you would say that you'd like further information on. Um, for those of you who are not members of the UTC network, I think there are a few here today, um, please do scan the QR code on the screen or you can follow um, the link. I think Anna has just popped it in the chat there. So thanks, Anna, uh, to join in our network and a feedback form will be sent to all attendees after this event just to review how you're finding these sessions and also a link to the remaining lunchtime session. So our next and final ETC Network lunchtime session for this series will be on Thursday the 14th of December at the same time where we will be joined by Emma Mersha. So some of you will be familiar with Emma. Emma is the Senior EU Programmes Manager at The Wheel for guidance on identifying a suitable EU funding programme for your project. So if you're not already registered, you can scan the QR code there in the top right or again, Anna has popped um, a link there in the chat that you can follow. So look, as always I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our presenter today Helena so we're really really grateful for you Helena for taking the time out of your day today to share um, all your knowledge and experience when it comes to all things communication um, and also to Anna who again this month provided um, the tech support in the background so it's really appreciated and with that so that concludes the lunchtime session for this month um, and I hope you all have um, a lovely rest of your day and we look forward then to to seeing you in December again. So thank you very much all. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone.